she looked at me with wide eyes, and, and of course that isn't what she wants. I mean, right. She, she's trying to uh, uh, trying to do the right thing, and people are trying to encourage her to go into hospice. She doesn't have any uh, malignancy. Uh, she has problems with her bones breaking easily. Uh, she's uh, very alert. I was way down the hall, and and I went to her room and. She wasn't there, so I was looking for someone to find out where she was, and she was down the hall, and she says, oh, Dr. Byrne, you know, and, and calls to me. Uh, this lady doesn't belong in hospice, but it, the insurance things are set up so that if she goes into hospice, her uh, uh, care in that nursing home will be covered. Uh, if she doesn't go into hospice, then uh, she has to have uh, funds from her own uh, uh, her own resources, certainly as long as she has them, uh, uh, they, they should be used for that. But when she runs out, there, there are no funds to, uh, to cover her, yet the uh, hospice would cover her care in the nursing home. So there are these things that are built in that are uh, what I would call difficulties, and yes, we ought to work them out and, and uh, the best thing I know to do is uh, to uh, to love other people, to be kind, so that uh, uh, to them, hopefully, that someone will be kind to us when we need that kind of help ourselves. Absolutely. And, it re- and, uh, well, I was just going to say also, Doctor, that it reminds me of passage in Corinthians where the Lord is talking about um, how the different members of the body, but that they're all vital and necessary. And then it talks about how even people with disabilities are 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 blessed to be the body of you know, of the people, and how th- uh, they need to be taken care of as the eye takes care of the the foot and the head, and it all comes together as one body, one body of Christ. That that's the way that we should work towards taking care of one another in both the early stages of life as well as the the late stages of life and that we should support each other and build up the networks that do support each other so that individuals and families do not have to suffer or go through um, a difficult time, especially when you consider the long-term care um, here in the country and how 85% of it is dominated by nursing homes and institutions. And uh, just real quick, I'm going to mention there's a, a law that we're trying to get passed. It's called Senate Bill 799. It's uh, the Community Choice Act of 2007. And what this bill would do, and, and every, uh, everybody should definitely support it and sign on to it, is it would create an alternative so that people that are eligible for nursing homes or institutions would have a choice to live in the community, in home, with um, caregivers without having to be shipped away, away from families, away from loved ones, or in institutional settings where they will not get the kind of care or be able to make the kind of life choices that they would want. And uh, also, listeners, I I want you to know that when we do post this interview, we will link to the card that the good doctor has told us about to protect your lives, and we will link to uh, the durable power of attorney for health care decisions as well. Dan, what was that bill that you were just mentioning? It's uh, called the Community Choice Act of 2007, Senate Bill 799. That's uh, very important because uh, uh, because that, that uh, makes a lot of sense. And many people want to stay in their own home just Absolutely. as long as they can. And we all should be doing things to help them to stay in their own home. And and. That this is a, a way of doing that. And that sounds to me like a um, a very sensible kind of thing to do. And we have uh, a many many co-sponsors and co-signers already on this bill. Um, so people, if you can get your congressmen, your senators to support it, the quicker we can get it passed, the better we can bring integrity back into the long-term care delivery system and provide community-based services and care in in the house, in the community, among loved ones, among families and friends, uh, churches and communities. Uh, and that's, that's where people want to be anyways. Uh, nobody wants to be separated from family and loved ones and just dropped into a place where they're warehoused and um, 
you know, waiting right. to die. The, the people will do better, and they'll be happier in their own home. Absolutely. So I, I would certainly encourage everyone to get behind this uh, uh, this bill. I, I, sorry about that. No problem. I, I haven't uh, read the bill, so I'm always a little cautious on, until I uh, do read the bill. Most but definitely. then, then I have to read it. But it sounds to me like a sensible thing for someone to do. I'll send you a copy of that bill, uh, Doctor. I wanted to. I definitely want to follow up and do another interview with you as well. But I'd like you to tell us a little bit about the continuum of life, uh, the movie that you, the film that you've made. Yes, the continuum of life is about uh, the early life, and and of course uh, uh, it. Uh, primarily was um, uh, aimed at doing things to stop abortion, but it was to use the things that we have from science to verify that at conception a uh, person's uh, life is there, and we can know that from uh, from things that we can observe in terms of the chromosomes and the DNA mm-hmm. and the like. And and uh, so it, it was that kind of a movie where uh, I was asked to uh, give a talk at our church, and then another you know and uh, and then another church heard about it, another church heard about it, and so I made the movie called The Continuum of Life, and that eventually was shown shown in in um, in many churches, uh, and um, and so sometimes I give thought to the fact that uh, I should probably do it again and carry it all the way to uh, the natural end of life and incidentally you have to use the term natural end uh, uh, a few years ago we could call uh, death to designate that someone's life on earth has had ended and you can get by with calling it natural death but natural end is a word that that uh, uh, should not be confused, and of course we have to do this because they've invented these other things called brain death, brain death and heart and death, and right, like. right? And then there is no such thing. There's only one true death, and that occurs when the the life, which is the the soul, separates from the body, and what you have left on earth then is the the remains. And of course there is no life when right. someone's life is ended. You know, there's no beating heart, there's no blood pressure, and the like, and and anyone can tell the difference between someone who's living and someone who's, who's uh, uh, truly dead. But they made up these things, and um, I, I say invented, concocted, and of course once the law gets involved, they conjured them so that they could get organs. Uh, organ transplantation, no matter how much we've heard about the goodness of it, we should realize that that uh, the donors become dead in the process, and always in organ transplantation, the donor becomes weaker. So uh, we can hope and pray that people start to learn more about these uh, these uh, actions of of um, donating organs. Yes, sir, and I think with this uh, video and with this. Uh, interview that we're doing many many more people are going to become aware of this i'd like to honor you doctor for uh, bringing these issues to light and for taking the time to speak with us and to uh, touch upon all these different things that people definitely need to be made aware of can you tell us if anybody would like to contact you how they could do that uh, whether it's a website or email or anything like that sir Yes, we we do have a website. It's called thelifeguardian.org. Uh, you know, the Life Guardian, all one. You know, the three words put together into okay. one. dot org, and and uh, an, another place you can get my uh, writings are uh, renewamerica.us, and and I, there I am listed as a guest columnist, and I have a number of my writings there also. So those two places you can get to me. And, uh, and of course, uh, if I can help anyone, I'm uh, happy to, uh, to do that. If they contact you, then you would... Uh, uh